While you're not too likely to find a partridge in a pear tree in Arizona, every winter you will find these birders taking part in the Christmas bird My count. Team and the, other, the other half of the team had five sap suckers. It was a wow. It's an annual tradition for the National Audubon Society that got started back in 1900. It's a long-standing program. It's uh, nationwide within the United States. It extends into Canada and Mexico and Central America. There's a few counts in South America now. Uh, it's, it's quite a, an extensive program. The main goal today is to collect a census of all of the species of birds and the numbers of each species. And it's a long-standing, long-term data set that has been collected on a regular basis for 100 plus years now. And so it really amounts to quite an important data set that gives us long-term trends in how some of these species are doing. We have three so far. Add another three. Each year, the bird count happens in the same geographic location. There are 36 areas across Arizona, and Tom Hildebrandt's team is looking in an area by the farming community of Arlington. It's near the Palo Verde nuclear power plant and along the banks of the Gila River. Tom's been doing this particular count for the past 15 years. He retired from the Arizona Game and Fish Department not too long ago. We're here today on the Arlington Wildlife Area, which is a game and fish property. And this property was one of the properties that was under my supervision while I was uh, still actively working. And so I asked to be allowed to do this particular section of the count because it was something that was important to me personally uh, as a supervisor to know how the wildlife was doing out here. The process is pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, it's, it's just going within your designated area and identifying uh, every bird that you can see uh, and trying to evaluate how many of them you are seeing. Some birds are pretty cryptic and you know you only see a glimpse in the bushes and so oftentimes we're identifying their, them by the sounds that they make and so uh, it's, it's relatively important to cultivate a knowledge of the sounds of the birds so that you can identify them that way. Other birds are real obvious. They're flying across the sky like maybe some of the uh, streams of, of white-faced ibis that we were seeing earlier this morning streaming across by probably several hundred in, in the final count. Um, so some of them are, are real obvious, some of them are pretty cryptic. Song Sparrow, that's a new one. Oh, we... No, we didn't have one. We had a big uh, okay. don't, don't know what they had, so. Since Tom is familiar with the area, he can spot when a bird species is out of place. I think we've had a couple of unusual birds uh, that, you know, are always iffy uh, for here. We had a green-tailed towhee earlier. Uh, we had a um, ash-throated flycatcher. Ash-throated flycatcher is common here in the uh, summertime, but it's uh, very rare in the winter. The green-tailed towhee is just the opposite. It's a, it's a high mountain bird, and some years it comes down and winters down here, and uh, other years you don't see it. But uh, this year we had them both, a, a normal summertime bird and a, a normal wintertime bird, both of which are relatively rare. Now Tom and his team aren't the only ones counting birds in this area. It's too big for one team to cover alone. Each count is set up so that it takes place within the same geographic area. They find a count center and then they draw a uh, circle around that center point that's uh, 15 miles across. Not too far away in Cave Creek, another bird count is set to start. Tysa Plea is coordinating this area. We're counting birds today. Oh, oh cool. This is the Christmas bird count. Oh, neat. <laughs> so we'll be prowling around the neighborhood all day. Oh, there's plenty of them here. Okay. <laughs> I've been doing this section now for gosh, maybe 10 years. And so I've kind of learned where the good spots are to find birds, like where we've been walking around here. It's a little bit of native desert, and we're getting all the nice birds that you would expect to find out here in a location like this. This count is much more native desert, a little higher elevation, so we're right in that transition between desert and chaparral. So you get a few of your chaparral type plants like the jojoba coming in. But where we're standing here is classic upland Sonoran Desert. And we're getting the birds I'd expect here, the gilded flicker. Uh, we had a nice northern cardinal, the black-throated sparrows. Uh, we have our wintering white crowned sparrows and they were, they're all over. They're going wherever there's any kind of a seed resource. We had some 
lesser goldfinch fly through. And uh, so those are the birds I'd expect. Lots of curved-billed thrashers, cactus wren. Um, keeping an eye out still for Harris's hawks. They like to be in this kind of habitat. So those are the birds I'd expect and we're seeing them, so that's really nice. This morning, Tice is joined by a family of birders. I just met them this morning, uh, young William and his dad, Bill, and William's granddad, Frank. And uh, William's a pretty darn good young birder. Uh, he's nine years old. So we've got three generations out here counting the birds today, which is fun. Answered my call. We'll see and um, Cave Creek from Seven Springs down to the Carefree Highway, including Spur Cross, uh, has been designated a uh, important bird area. And that's a program that Audubon administers. And what was pretty neat is the town of Cave Creek has passed a resolution acknowledging the important bird area, the boundaries of which match uh, an open space overlay that they put into their zoning. So that's very nice. So people here are really proud of the fact that they've got native Sonoran Desert and they seem to do a nice job of trying to protect it. Farther north near Sedona, Rich Armstrong is on a mission to make sure every bird gets counted. Two song sparrows, one Lincoln sparrow, but none of them came up very far. Red Rock State Park has feeders and they have a lot of juncos, a lot of white crown sparrows. You get scrub jays, you got, we had a ladderback woodpecker and a gila woodpecker. They have hummingbird feeders, so you get Anna's hummingbirds there. And then you walk down to the creek and there's, you look for flocks of sparrows and juncos as you go which I found a flock of chipping sparrows with some juncos and white crowns. But when you get down to the creek, it's totally different. You get a lot of song sparrows, Lincoln sparrows, and towies, and I had a rare white-throated sparrow there this morning. And sometimes you get ducks along the river, and sometimes you get a kingfisher along the river, which I didn't there, but we did other places. And so you spend a few minutes on the bridge uh, doing a little alarm calls, and the birds hop up on top of those cattails. And then you walk along the creek, uh, so it's different habitats. Along the creek, you might get yellow rump warblers or bridal titmice or some things like that. But when you're walking out along in the grassy fields, you get sparrows and different birds. So you have the, the water, the, the edge of the water, the grasslands, and then the desert scrubbies, and you get like four different habitats all within a couple of hundred yards. When the count is complete, Troy Corman at the Arizona Game and Fish Department enters the numbers into the National Audubon Society's database. The results are then published and are easy to find online. Participation in the count directly contributed to some of our Game and Fish Department wildlife management goals, as well as contributing to the, the long-term uh, data set that uh, was collected nationally. It's been going on for over 100 years. So there are circles in parts of the country where people have been doing this every year, over 100 years. And that information is actually used to help determine the status of birds. Uh, because we can get a pretty good sense of the trend by looking at this information over a long time period.